Coach Moffitt, Coeur d'Alene Camp, year two, here with your, your favorite brother-in-law, I'm sure. Only? Only He's brother? my only brother. Only brother-in-law, <laughs> so therefore favorite, uh, Kevin Roberts. But uh, camp, camp so far, you know, you've been at most of the sessions. You took the guys out uh, fishing today. How was that? That was great fishing. You know, Elder, Ian Miller, Mangrum, Tony Hook, myself, I was just driving the boat. Um, started off slow, but those guys got the hang of it. Caught 13 uh, silvers or bluebacks or coconut or whatever we call them, but uh, now we had a great time fishing. Good to get those guys out of the wrestling room and let them have a little fun. So. Uh, you guys here at Coeur d'Alene, you were state champs back to back 2010, 2011. Yeah. It's 2015, coach. We're due. You're due, yeah. yeah. I'm looking over behind, my, uh, behind me, there's two uh, state championship posters that you guys have hanging up, but um, your neighbors, Post Falls, won it this year. They were the, the bridesmaids a couple times, but yeah. now they're coming up. What do you guys got to do to get to get back where you were in 2010 and 2011? Uh, we got to get our club a little stronger. Um, we had a real good parent group there for a lot of years. Uh, a lot of kids wrestling freestyle. Uh, a lot of fight nights. A lot of camps where uh, you know I don't want to blame it on parents and kids, but uh, we we got to get more people involved again um, at the club level. Um, got to hook get our hooks in some dads that are willing to to haul kids around. Uh, you know, as being a teacher like yourself, it's hard to get a lot of days off um, to haul these kids to camp. So we got to get a couple more dads hooked in, maybe a couple ex-wrestlers, uh, get them on board to help coach the club a little bit. But uh, uh, it's a tough sell, you know, it's a tough sell on kids and it goes in waves. Um, I, I think that in about three or four years we'll be back on top again. We'll be back on top. We have a good club, we have a good junior high middle school team coming that Tony Hook, coach down at Canfield uh, Middle School, our our main feeder, and uh, you know they had uh, they've had a lot of success against all the other schools around here in the last couple of years. So I think in about three years, I think we'll we'll be making our way again. When I look at this, I hear this this term fight night. I've never heard that before. What is a fight night, and why does uh, that, that that makes <laughs> teams better? But what's a fight night? I'm not sure who came up with the word fight night, but basically it's. Uh, Let's say that our club, Buzzsaw Wrestling Club, is going to go to Spokane to University High School. They're going to host the fight night. What they do is they invite uh, neighboring clubs. It's up to whoever they want to invite. You show up, you weigh in, and you, you put kids in age groups and, and uh, uh, wait. And all you do is you drill for a little bit, then you wrestle for about two hours. Scrapping. Scrap, nothing but live wrestling. It's basically... You're wrestling a tournament in two hours. <laughs> that, that's and pretty good. When we won those state championships, when I t told our team we were going to a fight night, we'd take 25 kids to these fight nights. They did whatever we asked them to. And I'm not going to say that these kids now aren't committed, but it's a less. If I say we're going to a fight night, we might get 10 guys to go. So we got to change that culture again to where we're getting 25 kids going to fight night. You know, if I say we're going, we're going. You know, we used to hit fight night every other week. I think we only hit one this year, you know, just because of the timing of them. And we used to host one or two fight nights here at Coeur d'Alene High. So um, we just got to get that culture going again. You know, it, it's high school athletics. It's up and downs. Everybody wants to stay on top, but it's tough, especially in Idaho when you have to have 20 guys in the state tournament to win the dang thing. So we'll, we'll keep plugging away. We'll get there again. I talked to Roberts about uh, the disadvantage. I think that Western kids, to me personally, it's a disadvantage to have to drive nine hours to your state tournament. That's just me thinking that. How do you feel about that when you get your nine hours from your state tournament? Uh, I don't know if it's a disadvantage to your team. It, it can be a little bit because we do leave at six in the morning and we get down there and you, you, you get a workout in and then you're right into bed and you're wrestling the next day as opposed to somebody from Idaho Falls who is an hour away. They get up the day of the state tournament, drive over away, and Boise's four hours away. Um, is it a disadvantage? I don't know, but I'd sure like to see the state tournament in northern Idaho one of these times, you know, make somebody from Pocatello or Boise drive nine hours up here, you know, give us a, one of these times, let us sleep in our own bed, you know, and feel fresh. Um, I, I've been doing it for so long. I mean, you're talking, I've been going to the uh, coaching the Idaho State Tournament for dang near 23 years, you know, so State Tournament times, I'm used to it, you know, I think the kids are used to it, the guys who have been on your team, 
Uh, it's not an ideal situation, but that's the way it is. The, the population so sparse as far as, you know, you've got really rugged terrain in the middle part of the state south of here, wow. obviously north of here. Sandpoint's had obviously some great individuals mm -hmm. and, and teams. But when you look at, like, you guys, kind of the panhandle's at a huge disadvantage in my opinion. The panhandle is at a disadvantage. It's so, the population is so small. I mean, the, basically the population in Idaho is in Boise. It's in the Boise Valley. The panhandle, I mean, we probably should be either joined with Montana or Washington. <laughs> It'd make a lot more sense, you know, that, those, that state ought to be connected. You know, um, it makes sense for us to drive to the Washington State Tournament that's from here would be in Tacoma, what's that, five hours? <laughs> it's yeah, it's, it's, it's four hours closer, it's closer to go to Tacoma, Washington. And there's, I don't know how many teams there are in the GSL now, 12, you know, we could wrestle in the GSL. You know, How far is Missoula? Four? Missoula is about on a bus is a good three hours. Good three, three hours? Yeah. So, I mean, you're closer to two other places than you are. I mean, substantially Montana, well, closer. The Montana State Tournament's in Billings. That's that's a good ten hours from here. So that would be a so little further. Montana's a lot like Idaho. So You guys only have four teams up in this region, four big schools up here, and then the rest are all down in the They're south. They're all down south or east. What yeah. do you got, how do you guys deal with that? And I, I think it's kind of an anomaly for you guys to uh, stay up here. Well... Uh, you have our opinion in the north, and then you're going to have the opinion of the of Boise, or the Boise Valley, or the east. You know, everyone, how schools and administrators look at it is they will look at numbers of schools. In my opinion, it's always been that works in football, that works in basketball, that works in volleyball. Um, qualifiers per school, let's say like in football, you have 12 teams in your conference, so you should get maybe four or five bursts, okay? Um, in wrestling, when it's so much individualized, yes, we have four teams, but I'll tell you what, our, our number four guy that comes out of this region a lot of times is one of the toughest kids in the state. Um, last five years, three of the last five years, the big school's champs have come from here, from the Panthers. Exactly. Post balls let's, and you guys. Post. Let's just take this for example. You have Bryce Parsons from Lewiston High that signed with Oregon State. Let's say he gets upset in the district tournament and finishes fourth. That kid's not in the state tournament because now the Northern Idaho is not part of the wild card. All you guys aren't part of the wild card? No. Only the south and east is part of the wild card. Our number four used to be in a wild card, and we've had a lot of good wild cards placed in the state tournament, you know. Uh, we had a kid that wrestles for the Naval Academy right now, Hudson Staub. He got upset his first match uh, of the district tournament. He ended up fourth. Well, he got a wild card, and he ends up third in the state that year. And now he, he doesn't he have the opportunity. If he was wrestling this year, he wouldn't be in the state tournament. You're talking about a guy that got third in the state tournament. He would not have been in the state tournament. That might be a broken thing they might want to fix. Uh, the got coaches in the north have been hounding this, you know, all year long. And in, in our opinion, a true wild card is the southern region, the eastern region, the northern region. You're, if you truly want the best kid in the state tournament, you would find the best kid. No, don't walk like you told me yesterday. That's just watering down the state tournament. You know, so it really is. It is. For all I'm hoping purposes. that the higher ups in the uh, Idaho High School Activity Association, I hope they they see the writing on the wall and say, yes, we need the best kids in the state. But then you you can look at it. If you want to play devil's advocate, you know, Boise is going to say we have 15 kit, we have 15 schools or 12 schools, whatever they have, 12 schools. You know, we're leaving somebody starter at home. Well, that may be the case, but we don't know how tough he really is. If I get a referee shirt, can I referee a Moffat brother match? Uh, well, you already know who would win. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are entertaining, to say the least, man. Uh, all right, we got camp going on out here. You got anything else for me? Uh, just a tremendous camp. You know, uh, uh, Kevin does a great job, but those guys he brought with him, Mangrum is doing a great job, Ian Miller's doing a great job, Elder's doing a great job. Those three guys have come out of their shell. Uh, the high school kids love it, having those ex-wrestlers around. You know, they've done a great job. Uh, great having my assistant coaches here, Tony Hook, wrestled at Oregon State. He's been here all week doing a great job. Uh, you mentioned my brother. He's been here all week helping out, you know. Uh, he works uh, a regular job, not a teacher, so he had took time off from his job to be here. Uh, done a tremendous job, so, uh, you know, it's been hot. It's been hot here this week in the 90s, and these kids have 
And they've done a good job. I mean, people got to realize eight sessions of wrestling from multiple All-Americans for $99. People that aren't here are missing the boat. Guys in the panhandle. If you're not here, you're missing the boat. All right, I put your buddy Pete on the uh, spot. I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, are you going to have this camp again next year? Absolutely. I, don't, I like that. I like it when Absolutely. someone doesn't feel uncomfortable. Absolutely. Kind of like Pete told me, Post Falls is going to win again next year. They may. They, they okay. just may do it. All right. All right. Oh, hey, thank you for the time. We'll go out here and catch up with your, your uh, brother-in-law and uh, see if you had a little more coffee, all right? Okay. All right. Thanks but, for the time. But I, I like enjoy having you here, too, so you better be here next year. I'm not scared. Good. <laughs>